Jadon Sancho has reportedly agreed terms with PSG ahead of summer deal. McTominay to Napoli looking increasingly likely with the Napoli director of football in the UK today to discuss a potential deal. And Marcus Alonso being explored as shock left back signing. These are some of the topics we will be discussing on today's show. But before we get into that, please do me one small favour. Smash a like on today's video. Let's try and see 1,500 likes on this episode. And if this is your first time watching, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm live every single day at 8.30, 1.30 and 6pm UK time. Make sure you get involved. It's completely free content and everyone is welcome. Right, let's start the show off by talking about Marcus Alonso then. So this story has been mulling around over the last couple of weeks that apparently United have inquired about signing Marcus Alonso. Obviously, the injury to Luke Shaw has probably ampl amplified these stories because effectively Luke Shaw is going to be out to October. He's out for probably, what, the first six Premier League games? And that's best case scenario. Manchester United, when they came out and told us about Luke Shaw's injury, said that he'll be back in October at the earliest. And knowing Luke Shaw, he'll probably come back for a game and then be missing for another three months. That seems to be uh, the similarities that you have in Luke Shaw over the last couple of years. So do we need a new left back? Yes. Is Marcus Alonso the correct player? That's the question that I want to ask you today. Should Manchester United sign Marcus Alonso uh, this summer? Now, the thing that's really interesting about Marcus Alonso is his contract has expired at Barcelona. And I think this detail has been missed by quite a few people. So he won't cost us any money. He's a free agent. At Barcelona, he's earning about 100k a week, or he was earning 100k a week, which gives you a bit of an idea of how much a deal would cost. Now, the other options in the left-back position are people like Reguilón from Tottenham, but he still is under contract, so we would have to pay uh, a transfer fee for Reguilón, probably somewhere around £5 million. More expensive options is Ferdi Cadioglu from Fenerbahce, but it looks like Brighton are going to win that player. He's apparently going to Brighton for £30 million. Now, Marcus Alonso, as a free agent on 100k a week, maybe on a two-year contract, probably isn't the worst idea in the world. Does it excite me? Not really. But do we need a left-back? Yes. And is Marcus Alonso a potential option for that position? I think so, yes. Because as much as I want Ferdi Cadioglu, we clearly don't have the budget to spend 30 million on Ferdi Cadioglu right now. We want we want two midfielders. We apparently want another attacking player. There is still talks that we might go after Jared Branthwaite. So there is lots more business to be done in this window. And obviously knowing that we've got Harry Amas, we've got Dallo, uh, we've got Malasir who'll be back soon. We've obviously now got Maserawi. We've got four players there who can play at left back and obviously Luke Shaw as well. So for me, it does need to be more of like a temporary signing and Marcus Alonso is very much a temporary signing. He's 32. Um, you know, you'd give him a one or two year contract at the most. And I think for that, he probably does help the, the squad rotation because for me, the future of that left back position should be Harry Amas, but he's not ready to do that yet. You know, that might be one or two years away. So you don't really want to go and spend, you know, 30, 40 million on someone like Ferdi Kadioglu. And then in two years time, Harry Amas is just a name that we've forgotten because effectively, you know, there's somebody else playing in his position. So I'm not massively against Marcus Alonso when you put all of the things I've said into consideration, uh, especially because he's free. Like, it's not a terrible signing and it would offer us some squad depth. Obviously, he's very experienced, played in the Champions League, played for Chelsea for a long time, played for Barcelona. So yeah, um, let me know what you guys think though in the comment section. Should Manchester United go for Marcus Alonso? Free agent, apparently asking for £100,000 a week. Uh, moving on to Scott McTominay and the news that's just come out in the last couple of minutes that apparently Napoli sporting director uh, Giovanni Manor is currently in England holding talks with Manchester United over a deal for Scott McTominay. DiMarzio reported last night that apparently Manchester United have rejected a loan with an obligation to buy for Scott McTominay. Manchester United are still demanding 25 to £30 million pounds for the Scottish international. Now, if we can get 25 to £30 million, I would sell McTominay in a heartbeat. I think that's great business. I think the fact that he's come through the academy and would be 100% profit on our books will help us massively. And I'd be absolutely stunned if McTominay didn't want to move to Napoli. Like, Napoli is an amazing club. Uh, and, you know, he'd go there. He'd be playing Champions League football. He'd probably be on bigger wages than what he is on now. He currently only earns 60k a week at Manchester United. So if he wants to go to Napoli, I'm sure he would get an increase on his contract. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Fabrizio has confirmed as well in the last couple of minutes that Manchester United have told Napoli that a loan move is impossible for Scott McTominay. So it's either a permanent sale or no deal. And you know what? I completely agree with that. 
loaning out McTominay is pointless. We may as well keep him if we're going to loan him out. If we can get 25 to 30 million, great, go and do that deal. But a loan gets us nothing. We lose a player. We lose someone who can come off the bench in the final 10 minutes of the game and, and impact a match. And we're getting nothing in return. So I completely agree with Manchester United's stance there. Unless they're going to pay up, they can they can effectively do one. Um, but yeah, let me know. Like, Do you think McTominay should leave the club this summer? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd be interested to see what you guys think. Um, moving on to Jaden Sancho. This is coming out from uh, multiple different people. And the first story is from Fabrizio, which I know is the most reliable journalist at the moment for most people. And he is reporting that Manchester United are now aware of the possibility of Jadon Sancho joining PSG this summer. He confirms that contact is now ongoing between PSG and Jadon Sancho's agent. And he says that Manchester United are now just waiting for the first official bid. So Sancho to PSG looks like it is going to happen. Um, other journalists, Le Quip, uh, La Parisian, are reporting that apparently Jadon Sancho has agreed terms with PSG. Officially, he can't agree terms until a transfer fee's been agreed. But apparently, they always talk before, don't they? They, they read the room, they see whether the player wants to join. And apparently, Sancho has agreed terms with PSG. Apparently, they've offered him around £280,000 per week, which is about... £30,000 a week more than what he earns at Manchester United. Manchester United are demanding €60 million Euros for Jadon Sancho, which I completely agree with. I've said this many, many times before, but if PSG think that Manuel Ugarte is worth €60 million, Euros, right, then Jadon Sancho is worth €60 million. Euros. Manuel Ugarte is 24. Jadon Sancho is 24. Manuel Ugarte spent most of last season sat on the bench. Jadon Sancho went to Dortmund and helped them get to a Champions League final. There is no way on earth you can tell me that Manuel Ugarte is worth 60 million and Jadon Sancho isn't worth 60 million. Now, just to be very, very clear, I don't think Manuel Ugarte is worth 60 million. I don't. I think he's worth 40, 50 million euros tops. But if PSG's standpoint is either you give us 60 million or you don't get Manuel Ugarte, then ours should be either you give us 60 million or you don't get Jadon Sancho. It's pretty it's pretty simple, really, you know? If they value him at that price, we should value Jadon Sancho at that price. They're both the same age. And arguably, attacking players always cost more than midfielders. You know, Jadon Sancho will give you goals, will give you assists, whereas Manuel Ugarte is a CDM. He's a defensive player. And generally in the transfer market, the attacking players do fetch higher uh, transfer fees. So yeah, I, I personally think Jadon Sancho to PSG is going to happen. He's apparently already said yes to PSG. He wants to move. Obviously, we know he wants to leave Manchester United. Um, supposedly him and Eric Ten Hag have, you know, put their issues aside. But it's always going to be there in the back of your head, isn't it? If you're a footballer, you don't like the manager, you think he has his favourites, you think that Anthony's being played too much, whatever it might be. There's always going to be this tension between Sancho and Ten Hag. And I think that if you have J Jadon Sancho happy, he's a player worth having. But Sancho, when he's not happy, I just, I just don't think he's worth keeping. You know, he's one of those players where you need to get him in the right mentality, in the right headspace. And if he's not in that headspace, I think he sulks around. He supposedly turns up late to training. He doesn't seem interested. He's not putting an effort in training. Like these are all the comments that his past managers, Eric Ten Hag uh, at Dortmund was the same. At Man City was the same. Like there's a, there's a recurring theme with Sancho. If he's happy, if he's in the team, if he feels valued, then you get a great player. If he's not any of those things, then you get someone who's just not worth having. So for me personally, Sancho to PSG must happen. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about that one in the comment section below. I'd be always interested to see what other Manchester United fans have to say. So yeah, I'll obviously keep you updated on that one. And then off the back of that, there are some reports coming out this afternoon that apparently if Manchester United let Jadon Sancho go, they will try and bring in Ivan Toni uh, on loan with an obligation to buy. He's got one year left on his contract, apparently available for around... 40 to 60 million pounds, somewhere in that figure. Brentford are aware that if they don't sell Ivan Tony uh, this summer, then he'll go for free. So we definitely need to, uh, yeah, we definitely need to do something if we're, if we're going to go for him because there are lots and lots of clubs, Chelsea, Arsenal, who are all interested in signing Ivan Tony. I personally would bring him in. I think we do need to strengthen our, our strikers because Rasmus Hoyland's injured. He's got a hamstring injury again, the same injury he had last season. And Joshua Zerksy is playing for the first time in the Premier League. And I feel like Joshua Xerxes is more of a, a, a he's more of a, like a, a, a hybrid between a number nine and a number 10. And we still don't really have like an all out number nine, you know, a goal scorer. Um, and I think that Ivan Tony, I know some seasons he's dipped in form a bit, 
But if you look at Ivan Tony's attributes and, and qualities, he is a goal scorer. That is what he does. But um, you can let me know your thoughts on that one in the comment section below. I'm going to wrap the video up here. I will be back at 6 p.m. for a longer live show. I hope everyone has an amazing day. Please make sure to smash a like and subscribe before you go. This has been Daily Red Devil, and I'll speak to you all on the next one. Bye for now.